Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be going over Langchain's new retrievals and specifically automating web research. So, this kind of went under the radar, but last week Langchain released uh, this new retriever. And what that does is it allows you to go out to grab things like vector uh, databases, but it also, they came up with this concept of a web researcher retriever. And that allows you to go out and grab, like essentially scrape the web or act as a search engine. And so what we're gonna do today is look at how to do this with, uh, with Google specifically, and then go through the example code that they have. So they talk about GPT researcher, which is something that we looked at in the last video, but then, it, which also goes out and scra scrapes different things. Um, but we're going to take a deep dive into what this retrieval process is and using it in an LLM. So it kind of goes through the steps where you can do multiple different queries, get HTML pages. You could technically put that in a vector store, uh, retrieve the chunks, and then go through an LLM. It also looks at the task of GPT Researcher and then the other thing that they bring up is Langsmith. So in this series, we've, we've been going through Langsmith examples. And it's great because you can just uh, install this through pip and you literally just have to put in the uh, correct um, export keys and then you have Langchain that you can look at. The other thing that's kind of cool with this example is that if you don't have Langsmith because it's still in beta or you're, or you're on the wait list, you can actually click the trace here and uh, actually step through an example of them running it. I believe it's on a Mac, uh, a Mac 2, um, yeah, a Mac 2 Max GPU. So what we're going to do though is actually set this up locally, uh, which is a little bit confusing. So with that, let's get started. And um, I did want to talk about something really quick, though. Again, Nerding IO is kind of the education side of uh, uh, of this, and then we have released Ever Efficient AI, which is our productized AI automation. So if you have a chance, or if you have a project that you'd be interested in working and collaborating with us on, please go ahead and book a call. But with that, let's dive in. Uh, so we wanna look at the docs first. And so what this is telling us is that in order to do a very simple usage, we can do vectors and we wanna pull in chat uh, GPT or OpenAI. And then specifically, we're going to look at the Google search API wrapper. So in the, other, in the previous examples, we've been looking at like SERP APIs that you might have to pay for. This is something where you're actually going to set it up in Google and um, and get an API key to actually run this. So where it gets a little tricky is you actually need to go through and set up this Google search API wrapper. And so if you click this documentation, I'll put all this in the in the description. It comes to uh, the API docs for this, and they're a little confusing. So the first thing is, is it talks that about it's been adapted from the Stack Overflow, um, but the reality is, is you need to install the Python client, which is already in the repo. So what you can do is just go ahead and clone this repo. Uh, it doesn't, it will include the uh, requirement stock, so you can see that the um, not the readme. The uh, Python client for the Google API is right there. So that's the first thing that we need, um, which is what we're trying to track down. So then we'll have to create an API key, uh, create a custom search engine, and then create the custom search API. So again, it's a little tricky. You also notice that a lot of these links are broken. So um, we'll just step through it uh, one piece at a time. So the first thing is to go into your cloud cloud console, uh, which basically means you need to get into your Google admin workspace 
and then create an API key. So to do that, all you need to do is go into Google Cloud. You'll need to go to the API, uh, APIs and services, go down here to credentials, click create credentials, and then just create an API key. Once you have that, you can actually start creating uh, an environment file. It talks about the fact that you can use this Tom file specifically for uh, Streamlit, but uh, I've found that you know .n works a little better, so that's what I put mine in. But here's an example of what the Tom or Tomel uh, file would look like. So that would be your API key right here is what you would get from your credentials page in your Google Cloud uh, admin panel. So step two is Step two is that we have to uh, create a custom search engine. Um, and this is a little tricky. So sometimes this is enabled, sometimes it's not. If it's not, what you need to do is go into your enabled services, uh, which is through your APIs enabled services, look for the custom search API and then turn it on. You'll see something that just says enable. Um, even if you have this turned on and selected for a particular project, so if you don't have a project, you're going to need to create one, which you can just do new project. Then uh, you also have to make sure that it's enabled as the programmable web search or pro yeah, programmable search engine, which is also part of your admin uh, Workspace. It's under additional Google services, which is a little tricky. Again, I'll uh, I'll I'll put this in the uh, resources section. Once you've enabled both of these, the next thing you need to do is go into the programmable search create search engine. So I've already done this, but this is what you would. Do. you just want to create a new search engine you can name it whatever you want then you would click search the entire web you could also specify uh, you know specific sites if you want to just click I'm not a robot click create another pop-up will come up and then that pop-up will tell you that um, what your ID is so after that you want to take that ID and put it in your Google C S E I D. So right here is what this is going to need in order to get the Google wrapper set up. All right, so now that we have that and we have our Google API key, our Google custom search engine ID, we have to do the, the normal thing. So we need to make sure that we have an open AI key and then we want to put in our Langsmith uh, uh, variables. So we need to make sure that we have our API key and then our project ID. So with that, let's take a look at this Web Explorer link and go through some of the code. So what this is doing is we'll notice that we have this web research retriever. That retriever is going to allow us to, if we look at the documentation, we can define the LLM chain, so we can use OpenAI, which is what we'll be using in this example. But we could also use a different LLM if we wanted to. We could use uh, Llama or something else, um, which is really interesting. The other thing is that based on this, we can pick the number of results that we would want to use for the Google search. So if you notice right here, we have a num search results of three. This is where we're initializing our retriever. And then, uh, you know, other things. We have our wrapper here. We have our LLM that's being defined. And up here at the top, we're using our vector storage. So with that, we're going to actually take all this information and look at the prompt of, of what we want to do. 
So if we scroll a little bit further down, this is where we're actually defining Streamlight. So you'll see our image, we have our header, we're defining what we want this to look like. We're gonna ask a question. Then we're gonna go out to our retriever and actually retrieve information. You'll notice here that you have your, um, your handlers. And so you have a stream handler, which allows it to have that typing effect. And then we're gonna have our question as well as our answer information. So these two pieces are getting the result and then displaying it in two different boxes. And we'll actually look at a working example of this. So now what we're gonna to need to do is take this information and actually run it on, the, uh, on uh, our terminal. Okay, so now we're gonna open our terminal. You notice that I already have this running. You'll also see some errors. Um, I've noticed that sometimes it will give an error of this retrieval QA uh, with sources chain error, or it'll actually say um, that it can't do verbose. And um, I've noticed that like if you close it and clear it, sometimes it, you need to upgrade your, um, your lang chain, uh, but it can be a little, little finicky. So, but the command we're gonna run is streamlight run web, ex web explorer pi. And then we just wanna make sure that we have our app running. This will actually launch. So if we come over here, what we can do is we can actually use the uh, Explorer itself and now type in something. So we'll just use the same command that we had last time. What's Meta's Llama 2. And we can actually watch what's happening in the background but then we're gonna go look and check out Langchain as well. So you can start to see uh, the questions. You can see it going out to actually pull information back. And then you can check the pages that it's going out and getting. So as it continues, uh, you can even see like the URLs that it's checking. And ideally what we want it to do is give us a the most optimum answer and then the uh, the resource or reference that it it actually found so I'm gonna let this run and then we'll come back. so it looks like it's loading you can see that it's doing the the streaming by doing the typing effect and we have our answer so it's uh, giving us a description of the answer as well or like a full synopsis and then it's actually giving us the sources that it expected. And that is because of how we're actually splitting out this uh, array. So if you really wanna dig into how it's getting this information, it's actually looking at the metadata to define what those sources are. So the question is the question and answer. We have the stream handler, which is the initial text, or like printing in the text. But uh, to get the source, it's actually grabbing the metadata of the document, which is really interesting. You can see this in uh, when you're doing like searching for PDFs and things like that. So that's how we know the source and this is, that's how we do our question and answer. The other thing that's kind of cool is built into this example that they have, they have the context retrieval. We'll actually show you the information that it's pulling back and the results from the articles that it's pick, picking, right? So you can see uh, some of the information that it's actually pulling from, which is which I find kind of interesting. But since we turned on Langsmith, we can actually go back and check that as well. So if we go to our Langsmith projects, and I actually made a new project for this. So we're, I'm gonna go to this uh, 41, and then we are going to look at the, the chains that we just went through. So the most recent one is, is right here. So we have a retrieval chain, which gives us multiple different things. So we have our, our actual retrieval and we're looking at the question we asked. We have a stuff documents chain 
This is, if you notice, what's happening in the context for this page content is the part that we were looking at over here, this context retrieval, is basically the trace that we're seeing in Langchain. And you can actually see it step through each portion, right? So now we're looking at the response and what it put together. And again, another uh, piece of context, right? So, uh, and then we can also look at uh, this smaller piece. And I think this one is the one I misspelled. So, but it, it's really cool to see in Langsmith and be able to uh, dive into the trace, look at the latency like we've been checking on, and uh, look at these views, both as a table view as well as the other run view. So that's all I have for today. Uh, please remember to subscribe and reach out to us if you have any questions or if uh, you're interested in some AI automation. Other than that, happy nerding.